thank you, Vishnu, for a nice introduction. Um, uh, thank you for the organizer, Carlos Manning, for giving me the opportunity to, to give this class. Uh, okay, I will, this class it will be about high-resolution transmission electron microscopy. I would like to start to show uh, a video, okay? Uh, this, is, uh, this video was took in our microscope uh, two days ago. Um, here we have a sample, a semiconductor sample, gallium arsenate. Is oriented in 110 zone X, and uh, I, I changed during this video the focus. Okay, let me show. Okay, now you can see what what uh, pay attention that uh, the contrast is changing. Now you can see the planes here, the planes disappear here. The planes I have our orientation. Uh, I have a black, uh, white dots here, black dot here. Um, again, change again. You see, during the, the when I change the focus, the image change a lot in terms of uh, which kind of uh, planes or atoms or colors I'm see. The contrast that I'm seeing. You see, black dots here. Now. Uh, the point is, high resolution is, depends on the focus, depends on uh, the orientation, depends on what's, what's going on in this image, in this movie. The idea in the end of this class, uh, uh, for, for you, try to understand what's going on in this image or in terms of uh, high resolution. If you didn't get what's, what's happened, I will show just uh, uh, one picture in a specific focus in this just, that means now it's just one picture of this sample in a specific focus, okay? I can see here this orientation. I can see different orientation here. I can see uh, white spots here, white dots here. I can see black dots here. That means, what is, what is means of these dots and the change the contrast? Why change the contrast, change the, the, the uh, orientation plane is that I'm seeing? You know, what I'm seeing, plane, columns, atoms, what means white dots, black dots, is the same, is different. Uh, the, why I'm seeing different orientations is the same in the same image. Uh, I can see many planes in, or, or, or columns or atoms in, in terms of high, high resolution. Why I can see, okay? This is the idea. Try to understand what's happened in high resolution, okay? So, to start, you have the, the, the incident B, the, we can describe as this wave, okay, is a free electron propagate. The free electron interact with the specimen uh, and the, sorry, the specimen and uh, after that goes to the, interact with the specimen, goes to the objective lens, interact with the lens and uh, we have, it is a, a simplified diagram of the microscope, that is what's happening in the microscope, and we have the image with the planes or lattice fringers here, okay? So, so, we have here, we need to understand a little bit about the, the, the illumination that we have, the beam, we need uh, a little bit what's happened when the illumination, the beam interact with uh, our object. And we need to understand what's happened with uh, uh, our lens, our microscope produce in our uh, result image, okay? So the, the name of the interaction of, of the microscopy, the lens with the microscopy is a contrast transfer function. That means the final image, it will be an interaction between the object and our lens, okay? We need to understand this. If we understand this, maybe 
we can understand this image and also the movie, what's happening in the movie, okay? So the first point, of course, uh, the resolution uh, uh, is defined by Ernest Abel, is, is done by the, the uh, how, how much I can define two different points. For example, for light, we have this wavelength. That means the resolution it will be half wavelength, around 300 nanometers. If you think in violet, it will be around 200 to 120 nanometer. And here we have the acceleration vote for, for, for the microscopy. Here we have the wavelength. The wavelength is really, really small if you calculate. It's something like uh, around, uh, for 300 kV is two picometers, okay? And uh, this is the equation to calculate the wavelength in terms of uh, uh, energy for the microscopy. And the modern TM with uh, CS correct can reach half nanometers, uh, half angstrom. It's far away from the two picometers, okay? Uh, two picometer is less than half of uh, half nanometer, and without a CS corrector, 300 kV has a, has a resolution 1.7 angstroms, okay? So, again, we have this, I explained, uh, this is to calculate the resolution, uh, 300 kV it will be this, but actually we have this resolution. Why uh, we have uh, so, different resolution compared with the wavelength we have in terms of uh, acceleration voltage because the lens of reaction that we have in the microscopy. I hope you have a, a class about lens. Lens has many uh, aberration, uh, chromatic aberration, spheric aberration, coma, astigmatism, different kind of uh, aberration, okay? So, the resolution is mainly for crystalline materials, okay? I can use uh, uh, some information in amorphous, and even for crystalline material, it's necessary to orient it, your material to have a very good image in terms of a crystalline planes, crystalline atoms, columns. I'm saying this because it's, it's every time people say, okay, I'm seeing column atoms here. Depends on what kind of material you are seeing, okay? I, I hope that I can show for you. Okay, so again, what do you have in a, in a, in a high resolution image? We have a interference, constructive interference, okay? Because you have a periodic uh, a range of your uh, atoms in the material, in your sample. So we have uh, interference constructive. I'm saying that if you see this, you not can say directly that you are seeing planes or you are seeing atoms, okay? You are seeing a, interfer a constructive interference between the beam and your sample, okay? If you choose, for example, put the aperture and you choose just two beam, you will see just uh, a fringe in one direction. If you, if you normally for high resolution, of course I want to, to have all information, I don't use any aperture in order to get uh, all direction uh, in the microscopy. Again, if you look here, these appear with uh, white dots and here appear with black dots. I have more oriented this direction, here more oriented here. That means it's change across this direction, uh, the image, what's happened, what's going on here, okay? So, what's happened in the microscopy? We have the, the, the beam, we have the object, the, the specimen, we have the lens. The lens produce a uh, uh, the, we have a back focal plane and we have the image real, in the real space. In the back focal plane, we have the diffraction in the microscopy. So the first point that we need to understand is the diffraction or what's happened here in the back focal plane in the microscopy. If we don't understand what's happened here, we can understand the real image in our, in our microscopy. Another way to say this is the lens in, the, in, our, in, our, 
uh, exit wave is produce a Fourier transform and produce a second Fourier transform, a second lens, and they return it back for real space. The first one gives, gives to us the reciprocal space. The second one gives to us the uh, real space, okay? This is another way to describe the same thing in terms of diffraction and the real space. That means it's a mathematical, transforma mathematical transformation, a Fourier transformation twice in your sample. Okay, try to, to understand diffraction. You, uh, you guys had two classes about diffraction. This is a very easy way. You have the incident K, the beam here. The beam is diffracted. We have the result of the difference between the scattering, diffraction and scattering. Uh, this is done by the difference between uh, K, the diffract and K direct is, is K. We can say that this purpose uh, uh, is similar one divided by wavelength. The wavelength is, is defined by acceleration volt of the microscope. If you use 300, you know the wavelength. If you change for 200, you know the wavelength. Uh, that means the, the, the depends on the wavelength that you have, the K, okay? If you use the Bragg law, that means 2D sin theta e equal uh, m wavelength, you, we can have the Bragg law, and the k normally is a G point, or that means a plane or, or some structure that you have an interference constitutive in your sample, a G here. And uh, this, if you know, the, the beam you know, uh, the G you know very well when, where, where, where part uh, what is the diffraction part of your sample, okay? This is an easy way to understand the diffraction. So, but this G, of course, in terms of the sample, it, it's not only one direction because you have a three-dimensional sample. So, we need to understand a little bit about crystallography because of this every time now you, see, you have heard about orientation, one zero zero, one 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 zero, two zero zero, and so on. That means it's a three-dimensional information. We normally call 8QL, okay? This is Miller index for this G. That means when you think in a diffraction, you need to think in a three-dimensional space. It's a real, really, Different because not the real space is a reciprocal space, okay? It's kind of uh, difficult in the beginning, but uh, you see, uh, normally you are, going, you are going to use the microscope because it's easy and easy and easy, okay? So, this is, the name of this object is Evold Sphere. The Evold Sphere is, is a three-dimensional object uh, how can I draw the, the evolution sphere, okay? Remember, uh, the one by divide lambda is exactly uh, the point that I have constructive interference, okay? So, I have the direct beam here. I pass a radio. This radio has exactly the size of one divided by lambda, and uh, this is sphere, every point into dimension space, reciprocal space, that is touching this sphere has a constructive interference, okay? So, if I think in terms of lambda, as I show it, lambda for, for electron microscopy is really small, that means, this Evodo sphere for electron microscopy is really big, really, really big. That means, in terms of, uh, of uh, uh, tangent of, of the points, this Evodo sphere is touching a lot of points in my reciprocal space. If you compare, for example, with uh, X-ray, X-ray has one angstrom of resolution, uh, resolution normally, okay? So, the, 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 this sphere, every sphere for X-ray, because it's the same idea, it's diffraction, it's inter constructive interference, it will be very, very small. 
Because of this, if one of, of you did a powder diffraction, in powder diffraction, normally I can see the direct beam and one, two spot maximum. In this case, what I need to do, I need to rotate the sample a lot in order to get the different points, the different points, diffraction points of my sample. Why? Because the EVOD sphere for X-ray is really small. In electron microscopy, it's really big. I don't need this because the EVOD sphere is cutting a lot of um, uh, uh, constructive interference in, 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 my, in, my, in, in my sample, okay? Um, Again, here I have a comparison. One divided by 27 compared with one divided by one in X-ray. So, but even more than this, if you don't remember, this is only, I return here only to remember that wavelength is two picometer for electron microscopy. And uh, in terms of resolution for modern one, it will be half angstrom. That means it's really small. And so now I can understand why I can see in re, uh, high resolution image, I can see many planes compared with X-ray, for example. I can see because the evil sphere is touching a lot of uh, points, diffraction points in my sample, okay? If uh, you don't believe, it's simple. Go to the microscopy, change the camera lens, and you start to see this is zero order of zone lower. This is the first of order of zone lower. You can see different orders of the zone lower. Why? Because when you change the camera lens, the zero order is here. The second order, you are touching your second layer in your sample. Okay, so is a three-dimensional, as I mentioned, is a, a three-dimensional object. So a, a little more about, we need to return, and there is one more point, because uh, uh, we have the sample, we, we learn about the diffraction now, we understand a little bit about the diffraction. So now we look and turn back that image I show it. Now we can understand why we can see a lot uh, uh, orientation, a lot G in our sample using a TM, okay? Because of the EVOD sphere. But there is one more thing. This is a light diffraction um, for different uh, slits. We have seven, five, four, three, one. But one very important thing that I want to pay attention is for just one slit, the diffraction is distorted, is uh, elongated in a th nine degree compared with the orientation, okay? What do we have in our sample in Z direction? In Z direction, our sample is really thin compared with uh, X and Y. X and Y, we have many planes. Actually, we have infinite planes if you compare with the size of wa wavelengths. But in Z, we have some planes, hundreds, sometimes thousands, depends on uh, which sample you have, but it's, 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 it's really thin compared with X and Y. What's happened with the spot in Z direction? The same thing that's happened here in terms of optical diffraction. The spot in, in Z direction, it will be elongated, okay? So, in, in now, even more points in Z direction can be touched by EVOD sphere. So, there is two effects to explain why I'm seeing a lot of planes, a lot of columns in terms of, of resolution. One is because the size of the EVOD sphere for TM, transmission electron microscopy, and another is because we have a thin sample. The thin sample, in Z direction, the spot is distorted, elongated, and then now I can touch much more uh, uh, spots. Uh, as a result, you can touch, the EVOD sphere can touch much more spots. So this, uh, the sample is a, has a wedge shape, 
Normally, we use a very thin part of this wedge shape to get a high resolution, okay? Um, this is something related to diffraction. You have a G, S positive, and a, a negative, and a positive. You use it to, to get a very good image in terms of uh, excitation error, because it's here I need to explain. Um, if you get a positive, you have uh, the, you can understand that you have a two waves passing through your sample. One diffraction in the nucleus, and not the diffraction in the space, uh, electrosphere or, or empty space. If you get the nucleus, uh, the, the, the scattering will be stronger than when it goes through the electrosphere or empty space. And you lost the information very fast. Because of this, you need to adjust what you get, if you, if you get the positive, you are going passing through the nucleus, if you, uh, 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 the uh, electrosphere. If you get the negative, you are going to pass the nucleus, okay? So now, as I explained it, now I can understand why I have a different plane, as I can see a lot of uh, orientations here in our image, okay? But now I can just show you this, what is this? Okay, what is this? This is an image of a wedge sample uh, take with a tubing. Conrad uh, explained tubing with just tubing. Normally, if I ask it to you, what's the contrast you expect for a wedge sample? I expect that the thick part, the contrast it will be less than the thin part. Uh, homogeneously uh, contrast in the sample. But here I have a not homogeneously sample. This is a direct beam, bright field. This is a dark field. That means I get one specific G. I have a, a oscillation, a modular oscillation, okay? And they are complementary almost complementary, okay? I have, uh, not directly, uh, Conrad explained, but here, when here is, has a big intensity, here's this low intensity, and so on, okay? So, it's completely different of the normal uh, idea that I, I expected for a wedge-shaped sample. The contrast, the contrast is not a homogeneous var variation, but has this kind of uh, variation in our, in our RTM, okay? Now, uh, this is, I cut this from Carter Booker. This is a dark field, bright field image. It is a silicon. That means there is no composition variation. It's the same sample. And uh, uh, took uh, the same 300 kV wave lamp using a G220. And we have uh, this kind of uh, 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 image, okay? So, what's happened? We need to understand a little more what's happened with your sample when the beam interact with the sample. Now the beam, we have the incident beam. The beam is scattering different G, different uh, or, uh, uh, um, distance of uh, your sample because different orientation has different distance scattering this different distance in your sample. How can I describe the sample, okay? The sample in an easy way I can describe it because it is a periodical sample. We can describe as so, so, some, 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 ish, some ish of all unit cell that we have here, okay? We have the incident being here and the scattering all unit cell that you have. Here is the fa factory structure of, of your sa our sample. Uh, just to mention it, for Hutter for this cross-section, this depends on of, of the Z. That means the scattering it will be different for different uh, elements that we have in the sample, okay? But in terms of uh, understand, as I said, the scattering with all G that we have because it's a wave, as similar in, in, in uh, optical, diffract with uh, all slit, all column that we have 
in our plane, is our structure co interference, constructive interference that we have in our sample. We need to uh, <laughs> summish again in all different uh, G that we have in our sample, okay? To describe the one G that's passing is interact with uh, all G that we have in the sample. Uh, I have a lot of equations now, but the G is not uh, um, um, described in a mathematical way, but gives to you the final result and uh, try to understand what's happened, okay? So, now I need to expand this. I will expand this in terms of different G here, G1, G2, G3, but to be easy, as you see in terms of image, in the image I get G220 and the direct beam, I will do approximation using two beam approximation. This became an interaction between the two, be, two, two beam. G depends, look for, this is the equation for only two beam approximation. G depends on the zero order, and the zero order depends on G. Now you try to understand why they are complementary. Not perfectly, but now you can see that when I have the image in G, it has some relationship with zero order. When I have the direct beam, have some interference of G, okay? So I can change this, this, uh, uh, this, this part for G plus S, okay? Do the differential uh, of, of uh, the equation, okay? It's uh, just to show that I'm getting the two B and one point that in the end, in the end, the exit wave, it will be, uh, uh, I, I need to get the square of the exit wave because the intensity is not, we can, we cannot measure the exit wave. We measure the square of the exit wa wave. And the intensity needs to be normalized, needs to be one, okay? So, we have uh, here a lot of uh, uh, equation again, but if you do, in this equation, uh, 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 derivate, you can see here is the derivates of the equation, and I can get the second order of uh, uh, equation. So, second order of equation has two solution. Here is has this two solution. S, in terms of, uh, of, uh, of uh, diffraction, contains the... Uh, The coefficient is excision, that means contains the thickness of the sample, okay? So, I can use a different uh, approximations, change for explanation for sen and cosen, and uh, using different uh, uh, approximation contours again, I can get that the G, the final equation, as I said, my G is not explain everything, but is a oscillation between sen. I have a sen oscillation in G uh, as final result, okay? So, in the end, the square of the G, because I measure the intensity, I have this kind of equation. Is a oscillation in sen with care, that depends on the thickness of the sample and the coefficient extinction of the sample. So, now I can understand why, for example, for different uh, material, I lost or is difficult or easy to get a high resolution. For example, for gold, that I have here, the, thick, uh, the uh, coefficient of extinction, it will be higher than the carbon or aluminum or, or light material, and it will be harder to get a high resolution, okay? Because the, the intensity that press through the, the sample depends on the thickness and depends on the coefficient extinction 
of your sample. And the coefficient is dependent on the factory structure, depends on the z, different z has different co coefficient extinction, okay? So, but it's the same, as I said, the intensity needs to be normalized. In the end, we have the intensity for G is, is a sen square, and for zero is one minus sen square. That means it's complementary. Now we can understand why I have this in terms of, of, uh, of uh, uh, image. This is the fraction uh, image for G, and this is the image of a direct beam. It's an oscillation, a semi square oscillation, and they are complementary. When one the maximum, another is the minimum, and the thickness of wedge shape, the thickness is changing this direction. Here, I don't have information exactly because uh, the, the coefficient is teaching zero goes too high and zero the, the intensity that, that I can get in, in, in the image. Now I can understand what's happened in terms of uh, the diffraction here, okay? Why? Because in the beginning I show that two beams, only two beams depend on each other. The direct beam depends of G and the G depends on of, uh, of uh, of, of zero direct beam. So try to expand this, not in terms of mathematical way, but to understand that any G in terms of resolution depends on the G that you have uh, around the other G. That means now I can understand a little bit the difference in terms of uh, this G depends a little bit about this G because the thickness change here, and a little bit in terms of difference in orientation change the G that I'm seeing. Uh, now you can understand why in terms of diffraction, in terms of uh, um, um, uh, diffraction in terms of image, you need to get to beam. Why? Because if I use all beams that I have, I have an interference in this beam. That means it will not be a clear image. So I tilt the sample, go to the, the, the specific tube G that I want, and I have a di direct beam, and the only specific G, and that information, it will be much more clear, okay? Because if you try to do in Sony X, that I use zone X for resolution. If you try to do, you have an interference, the other Gs, and the G that you choose to get the, the information. Maybe, and for specific some, some cases, you get a wrong information, okay? Or you get a less contrast or uh, in terms of that information you want, okay? So, uh, because this you need to use a two beam a pro, uh, to be in terms of a diffraction, uh, dark field image, center dark field, but using to be in standoff to use the zone X, okay? So, but there is one more thing, okay? Now I understand just one image, okay? It's changing in terms of uh, orientation, different planes. But there is in one image, there is a more one point that we need to understand why I can see black dots and the white dots, okay? But in terms of the move that I show, there is one more thing. Remember that I move and change the focus. The focus changes completely the result of the image. What is the best focus to get the image? What is the correct focus to get the image? Okay, because if you change the image, change the interpretation that I have. Okay, so I need to understand what's happening when I am changing the focus. Okay, so again, we have the incident being the spasme. Now we understand a little bit what's happened when the beam interacts with the, beam, the spasme, and we have the length. Now we need to understand the contrast transfer function. 
but the contrast transfer function is directly related with the length in the microscopy. Okay, we need to understand what, what's happened with our exit wave when passed through the lens. Okay, uh, just to return the object, but not uh, 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 again. Just to show when when the beam sit uh, with the the our sample. Our sample has. Uh, different atoms. This atom has an inner potential. This inner potential is, is scattering the beam. We have a uh, first order, second order. For different atoms, we, we have, this is another way to explain a little bit the same thing that I already explained it, okay? Uh, we have different uh, potential for different atoms. That means the scattering it will be different because of this in the high resolution. Uh, we have a a little bit about composition information, okay? And we have uh, different thickness to get a high resolution for different materials. For example, for gold, if I want to get a very nice high resolution, the maximum thickness it will be about 10 nanometers. For copper, it will be around 40 nanometers. For carbon, 100, 150 nanometers. That means if I have a have a metal and I want to prepare the sample, prepare to, to work a lot because you need to prepare a very, very thin sample, okay? But in terms of carbon, it will be easier compared with uh, uh, have elements, okay? So, now this is a, a approximation for the object, for the specimen, because the specimen is really thin, we can approximate for a weak phase object approximation. That means we change the, the, the interaction of, of the, the beam with the sample by a potential. Just to change, put the potential. And this potential, of course, needs to be uh, described the G, the constructive interference that we have. But the focus here, it will be the lens, just to understand what's happened. Now, what's happened with the lens? The lens is a convolution, is a point spread function. It's a convolution between the incident beam that we have with the lens here. The lens produces aberration, and I have uh, 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 a small resolution compared with uh, uh, the wavelength that I have in, in our microscopy. That means the aberration of the lens is really important to describe the contrast transfer function. Actually, the aberration is the point that describes the contrast transfer function, okay? So we have uh, here uh, um, uh, the contrast transfer function. The contrast transfer function depends on the lens, but depends on the microscopy, okay? The first thing depends on the aperture, function aperture. If you put some aperture during the resolution, you reduce the information that you have. But suppose that I didn't put anyone. The aperture it will be the size of your lens, okay? Envelope function is related to uh, the gun, is related to the illumination system. For example, chromatic aberration is directly relation with the uh, delta E energy that I have. If you remember um, um, the class about gun, field emission gun has around 0.5, 0.6, in terms of delta E, and the lab six thermionic gun has 1.5. The achromatic aberration for lab six is higher than for field emission gun. Okay, I will show a little bit more what's the effect of an envelope function in the contrast transfer function. But in the end, this is an easy way to describe uh, what's happened with our lens, mainly the objective lens is the contrast transfer function depends on the focus in this way and depends on the uh, aberration, uh, um, spheric aberration of our lens, okay? As I said, this is uh, uh, 
Easy way, okay? Why easy way? Because we have a lot of aberration in terms of our lens. But in a no correct microscopy, CS is too strong that I can approximate only for focus and CS, okay? The aberration, correct aberration. But in another way to describe this, because we are in a reciprocal space, instead of to use the real space, we can use the sen, it's change the exponent for sen. It, this is a, a contrast transfer function in a reciprocal space, okay? So, as I said, depends on how of, of aberration of the microscope. Why am I saying? Because in modern microscopy, the CS is really low. Sometimes, if you have a really low uh, spheric aberration, it starts to depend on the other aberration that I have in the lens. Always, lens has aberration. Always, lens, it will interfere in a final image. You need to understand how, okay? So, in an ideal CTF, that means a perfect CTF, what I want? I want that this is an intensity of the contrast transfer function. This is a frequency. Frequency, that means uh, in a reciprocal space, uh, is opposite D, one divided by D. That means here we have a very, very small real space. Here we have a very big space. That means for example, here we have around two angstrom. This is the intensity that three, two angstroms, angstrom is transferred by contrast transfer function. This is uh, five nanometer. This is the intensity that five nanometer is transferred for, for, for this contrast transfer function. This is a perfect that, that we, we wanted, okay? But in Rio, in the microscopy, we have something that change and they start to oscillate, mathematical oscillation this, because this is done by uh, aperture, uh, envelope information, and the sand is starting to oscillate, and we have a lot of oscillation, and the theoretically, looking at the, the, the equation, we can get uh, infinite resolution, because the oscillation just decreases, but it will be here and here and here and here, and never stop. Okay, so one more point here. Now, if, if the transfer function is positive, the atoms, the columns, the, uh, the planes, it will be black. If here is negative, it will be white. Now I can understand why I can see white dots and the black dots, because the contrast transfer function change the intensity here. Sometimes I can see white atoms and black atoms or, or planes or, or, or columns of the atoms, okay? So, but what's happened, why in the microscope I don't have infinite resolution? Because of the envelope function. The envelope function dumping the uh, contrast transfer function. The envelope function depends on the temporal coherence, spatial coherence, that means depends on the GAN. If you change the GAN, you change the damping, that means the, the final limit information for TM FAG, field emission GAN, it will be higher than thermionic. Depends on the sample drift, depends on the sample vibration, depends on the site that the microscopy is installed, my mechanical vibration, depends on the electromagnetic field. That means everything that can, uh, is dumping of the contrast transfer function, reducing your resolution. If you get, because of this, you need to install your microscopy in a very good site, in a very good place. If you install in a very good place, you increase this dumping and increase the resolution that you get in, my, in your microscopy, okay? So, now, if I do some calculation, I can find using uh, the best way that the transfer function can be uh, transferred 
the intensity, okay? And I can find the best focus that the name is a search focus. But what does mean a search focus, okay? Just means that this intensity is transferred almost perfect, or the best way that I can transfer, okay? Because if I change the focus, I change the function, the transfer function, that means not the best way, okay? So, depends, as I said, depends on the focus, depends on CS. And now we will change a little bit about focus and what's happened in, uh, ah, and the, the resolution of the microscopy, sorry, is defined exactly in the essential focus, okay? In the essential focus, we have the equation for resolution of, of our microscope. And this is the contrast transfer function for uh, essential focus. If I change the focus, now I'm changing the focus, the search, minus 66, minus 20, uh, 56, and 97, I'm changing the shape of my contrast transfer function. Okay. Now, wh what I can uh, understand here. First, I change by uh, white dots for black dots. If I have a specific uh, plane or constructive interference here, this plane which will appear in our final result, final image with black instead of white, okay? What's more happened? This specific fre frequency here is not a transfer. I have a zero. There is no, if, for example, if I want to see um, one, one, one direction of a silico, and I change the focus, and it puts exactly one, one distance here, I can see. The transfer for this specific point is zero, okay? I can see this. Uh, but there is some advantage in terms of changing the focus. Why? Because when I change the focus, I start to increase a little bit the resolution of the microscopy. You see, now here is zero. Now I can transfer a little bit. Now I can transfer a little bit more. That means the intensity here, the resolution here, that was zero. Now I can transfer this for our image. That means you can see some specific distance that's not possible to see in focus search. Change your defocus, okay? In electron microscopy, because of the, the uh, lens is a conver convergent lens, only image are, are take the image only in uh, um, under focus, okay? Never over focus, only under focus. Because of this is minus, minus, minus instead of plus, okay? Only I use minus instead of plus, okay? I took only in uh, under focus. I can change too much that I can have a passband, okay? And I can see some specific distance. This is a 100. Uh, 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 100 kV electron microscopy, that's not possible to see 111 uh, silicon. The resolution is around the two angstrom. But if I change the contrast transfer function, I create a best, pa best pa uh, pass band, and I can see now this uh, space of the silicon in 100 kV. Okay? Uh, now I can show you another thing. If just to show and prove something that I, 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 show, I, I said for you, okay? I'm changing the focus. If you see here a, a Fourier transformation, I can see black points, uh, black circles here. What does it mean this black circles? Anyone has an idea about what does it mean this black circles here that I'm seeing when I change the focus? Remember, here, just try to help, okay? Here I have the Fourier transformation. I'm seeing the, the distance here. Here uh, is high resolution. D is very big in terms of, uh, of uh, reciprocal space. That means it's very small in terms of real space. 
when I change the focus, I'm starting to see some uh, black circles in the uh, Fourier transformation. What it means, these points that I'm seeing, black points? That means I'm showing that the contrast transfer function exactly has that shape that I show it. Okay? How? Look at this. I have here, in this specific space, there is no transfer in terms of, uh, of, uh, of uh, contrast, uh, tra Fourier transformer. There is no contrast, there is no intensity, it will be black. If I change a little more, I have more and more and more points in different distance, in different uh, uh, points of the reciprocal space that will be transferred with uh, uh, zero, no intensity. Again, look this. We have a different points, turn it back. Now just one point, I'm changing the focus, I'm changing the intensity, okay? That's it. That point is transferred. So, but as I said, it depends on the focus, but depends on the CS. The same acceleration, but different CS, different objective lengths, I have different uh, contrast transfer function in our microscopy. Um, any kind of, uh, so, um, every kind of uh, G or, or space, distance, it will be transferred in a specific intensity that depends on the contrast transfer function. I need to understand the contrast transfer function in order to understand the image that I'm seeing. I have here a simulation now. Uh, this is a vanadium silicate. Uh, uh, I have here thickness and the, the focus. This is the... the image that I get, uh, simulated, you, you can see that you change a lot the image in, in function of the focus and in function of, of focus and in function of the thickness. The image that you can see is depends on the thickness. I explain how when I show the to be approximation, the holy, uh, holy willing equation, and then now depends on the focus, okay? If I change the focus, I change the contrast transfer function, I change the image at, that I'm seeing for each specific uh, direction. Another example, this is a germanium uh, semiconductor. Again, this is the thickness and the focus. I change the thickness, change the information that I get. Or if I change the, the focus, change the information that I get. So, now you can understand the first goal, try to understand what's happened here, okay? What's happened here? I'm changing the focus, I'm changing the contrast transfer function. Every distance is changed in function of the focus. More than that, because I have a wedge shape sample, depends on the thickness also. So, we have a, a different focus and a different thickness. If you know very well your sample, for example, silicon, germanium, and it just to try to understand the orientation that you have, the orientation that you are seeing your sample, is go to the our resolution and you can easily get, or you try to measure some angles or some distance. Yes, it's easy and straightforward. But if you try to understand what kind of atoms or planes or columns you are seeing that is not straight for using high resolution. You need to do a simulation. Why? Because the, this image depends on the thickness and that even if I get in a specific focus, depends on the thickness but depends on the focus. That means normally if you don't know about your sample, or if you want to show that a specific contrast belongs, for example, oxygen, or belongs to, uh, came from 
carbon. You need to do a simulation. In high resolution image, it's very important to do a simulation in order to interpret your image. Sorry? There is one specific focus that you have the best constraints. Yes. Yeah. Ah, the thickness. The thickness. Uh, yes and no. Okay? L let me explain in another way, okay? Uh, the simulation gives to you some idea that you have, okay? Here, if I have the thickness, you know, as you said, the thickness is here, is the change is not too much, okay? But it's not the best, the best thickness to see the double in terms of the germanium. It will be here, okay? That means, depends on what you want to see. But the point, the point is, the interpretation of a high resolution image is not something that you, you do by straightforward, okay? You need to do the simulation. Why? Because the image depends on a, a lot of parameters. As I said, depends on the Z, the elements that you have, depends on the thickness of your sample, depends on the focus that you, have, you are using. So try to understand how resolution image needs to be followed by simulation, okay? Uh, but I am using simulation. What, what is the advantage that you use a simulation? If you, for example, if you have a very difficult uh, sample, okay, with many elements, you need to use to understand the contrast. In a, uh, you need to, you can use the simulation to understand the contrast in experimental image. You can improve the structure analysis, saying that I have this orientation or I have these atoms. Provide some clues for a correct image analysis. You, you, can, you, know, you can do the simulation as you suggest and try to find the best thickness in order to get the best image, okay? Okay, this is a good question. How I know the thickness sample? Using use is a good way to, to know the thickness of your sample. When, when I hope that the guy explained wheels, show that's possible measurement the thickness of their sample. There is another way, okay? If you go to the scanning electron microscopy, the back scattering depends on the thickness. You can do the simulation for different thickness and they get the signal. The signal of the backscattering depends on the thickness of your sample. You know, if I have a thick, thickness, thick sample, the scattering it will be higher. The thick, uh, thin sample, it will be less. And uh, you can do a uh, simulation, and the intensity is directly proportional of the thickness. And they get the thickness by backscattering using a scan electron microscopy. Uh, I can calculate image for comparison with experimental ones and provide ways to improve the image and the instrumentation. I will show some uh, simulations, okay? Just to, that, just, just to show that it's possible simulate very well what I'm seeing, okay? Here I have the, the image, here I have the simulation, it's completely the same and now I can understand the position, the atomic position in the contrast of our image. I have the another, this is uh, zircon, zircon oxide, this is titanium oxide, I have the image, I have here a, a zoom in, and this uh, red part is the simulation of, of the image. Now I can perfectly say that I'm seeing this orientation, this kind of atoms in this direction, okay? And the, the same thing for uh, thin oxide. And uh, this, as I said, in a good paper, in a 
best paper or good paper in terms of high resolution image needs to be follow a uh, simulation. Here we have an image taken by high resolution. Uh, uh, this is STEM, not TM, but in the same way we need to simulate. To int even this is a correct microscopy, that means the resolution is really amazing. Then the guy know what, is, what material he has, and now to understand exactly atoms that I'm seeing here needs to be follow a simulation, by a simulation. Otherwise, it will be impossible to understand, perfect to understand your high-resolution image. As I said, if you want to measure some distance, if you want to see, there is many things that's possible to to do using a high resolution image. Look at the effects, measure some distance, look at the orientation, but you need to have a very good knowledge about your sample previews. If you have, you can do something, but if you try to understand in terms of atomic position, in terms of what atoms you are seeing, it's really necessary to do simulation. It's not straightforward, okay? Thank you.